Welcome to Maxibility. To unfold different layers of knowledge, stay tuned with us till the end of the video. Let's get started. And uh, before we get started, I am. Uh, I want to introduce myself and uh, Alan, who is going to um, walk us through this webinar today. Um, I am Rakesh and uh, I am doing this webinars for this is the third webinar in a row and we intended to do this accessibility webinars once in every quarter and um, I want someone to talk about screen readers and I'm sure Alan was the best in using and testing with screen readers and he agreed to join us today to share his knowledge on testing web accessibility with screen readers and um, Alan thank you for being here with us today Alan is uh, Alan Smith is working for Humana and Criterion Fine Art 8 and uh, he has over 25 years of experience in uh, uh, software testing and management and around six years and plus in um, the space of accessibility is part of the worldwide web consortiums task force invited expert for mobile low vision and a couple of other task forces he is an invited guest for uh, accessibility program at university of north carolina and uh, he is with us to share his knowledge on testing with the NVDA screen reader for web accessibility testing. And he has prepared a very wonderful documentation and shared it with us all. Um, for any questions that you have during your session, I would request you to post it on chat or wait until the end of uh, the webinar. Um, unless you have any specific reason you want to have a word in between. Um, with that, I would hand it over to Alan to take it forward. Thank you, Rakesh. Well, I appreciate everybody joining. I know for some of you um, in India, it's very late. So hopefully uh, you'll find value in this and value in staying up late and uh, listening to some crazy old man talk about screen readers. Uh, <clears throat> my goal today uh, is to introduce you to screen readers so that you're basically not intimidated by them. I know that uh, a lot of people find accessibility things uh, difficult. Um, as you get involved in it more and more, you find that some of the testing is very straightforward. Uh, color contrast is easy to test with a couple little tools. Uh, keyboard focus, tabbing, uh, keyboard trap, but the mystique uh, of the screen reader seems to uh, always hit people where they're not quite sure what to do and how to test with a screen reader. But the interesting thing is, from a legal standpoint, um, we don't see uh, lawsuits against companies because tabbing order isn't correct or uh, focus indication doesn't show up on the screen, we get legal issues because a blind person can't use the website. And so the only way or the best way to test it is with a screen reader yourself. You can't find these issues by using automated tools and you can't find them by not hearing what the screen is announcing. So um, I'm going to be going over NVDA. I also have a document for JAWS, and um, both of these tools are the two biggest uh, or the most used screen readers in the industry, but uh, the principles apply to Chrome Vox, uh, the Windows narrator that's on your Windows devices, uh, Safari um, TalkBack, on the piece on Apple as well as uh, the mobile devices. So what we're going to be doing is finding out how to test with a screen reader. We're not 
we're going to be learning how to use every single command that a screen reader can do. We just want to make sure that the website and the components or elements are coded correctly for someone who cannot see the screen. And the um, analogy I have here is that basically I'm going to be um, <clears throat> teaching you how to ride your bicycle without the training wheels. So you can see the bike and go and pick it up and go for a ride and not be intimidated by it anymore because uh, your mom and dad took the training wheels off. You're not going to be able to be a, a, a racer after today. You're not going to be able to do, be a BMX uh, uh, jumper over hills and things. You're just going to be able to balance on your bike. So I've left my email up here on the screen for a while. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'd be glad to help anyone for as long as you need. So you have specific questions on a website, a page, an element, a widget, or something like that. Just shoot me an email. Um, it may take me a while to get back to you. Um, if I'm on my mobile phone, I get lost with emails and can't figure out some of these uh, chain groupings of email letters. But once I get my PC, I can figure things out. Uh, but I do have a full-time job at Humana, as well as a part-time job with uh, Criterion 508. I've tested a lot of sites and um, have used screen readers uh, for a very long time, six years. So um, it's become second nature to me, and I hope that I don't take advantage of that knowledge and just try to breeze past something that might not be understandable to someone who's just learning. So uh, please feel, reach out with any questions at the end of the presentation, or you can email me. So what I'd like to do first is just to go through my document step by step. Um, we're going to be setting up a couple settings in NVDA, which make it a lot easier uh, to use. And once you make the settings, uh, you just you don't have to worry about changing them. Um, so I have introduction, how to get NVDA, which I think is pretty obvious. So I'll be going by some of those things rather quickly. But we'll get right into the settings in just a minute. We'll scroll down this. <clears throat> so NVDA stands for Non-Visual Desktop Access. It's a very popular screen reader, of course. Uh, JAWS uh, is another one that's very popular, but it costs... Um, thousand dollars twelve hundred you have to have a maintenance agreement if you want to get updates for two years and such but NVDA is free um, we use it exclusively at Humana and at some of my other employment uh, locations in the past because we can get entire um, software testing and development teams up and running and testing very quickly and without a lot of money, of course, which is always good from a budget standpoint. Now, uh, they do have a couple of differences. All the screen readers uh, have little nuances, but JAWS and NVDA are very similar in most of the commands, and uh, as, as well as what they announce. So NVDA is a good, a good choice to start with. Um, here's how to get it. So it's in the documentation, it's at that website. And uh, we'll be testing for things like reading order, how tables are read, label association of fields, and we're going to be going through some um, actual websites once we uh, get the settings set up. So let's get right into the settings. One of the main things is um, voice rate. The screen reader can read at different speeds. If you are a blind user, oftentimes you have your um, speed reading uh, or the, the voice rate faster than someone who um, isn't blind because uh, blind people can actually hear a lot better and can understand things a lot quicker. So uh, we want to just set the rate and um, just show you where it's at so if it's comfortable for you. So uh, if you can see my screen, <coughs> NVDA is here somewhere. I got to start it first, so double click on that to start it. It'll pop up on the screen. I'm going to move this off just so you don't see it. But down in the bottom of your tray is the NVDA icon. We click on that, and we get our preferences, tools, help, and we'll be just changing a couple of these. So in preferences, see what we have here. Preferences, and 
we're going to be going down to voice settings, preferences. Where is it at? Settings. And speech. And here's our rate. So you can have it up high. Uh, I typically have it about 35. So if I had it, well, let me show you. If it's t if MBDA is turned on, it'll be announcing a rate value. So you can see that um, it's like 33. I'll just send it to 29. So that's one setting. Now, if you um, wanted to, there are keys in order to jump to these things, but I don't remember all these keys. I mean, like I say, you only need a few commands. Um, there's too many things in life to remember besides all the different keyboard commands for your screen reader. So if you want to change it, here's the settings, speech, and just go back and change it. You apply that and then OK. So here I found a rate of 25 to 35 works pretty good. And then we have some other keys here. Um, keyboard settings. So let's move this little speech here to the side. Down here, we got that. Preferences. I think uh, I think they changed it from when I had this other view. I didn't notice that, but settings. My mistake. I should update it. The keyboard. Okay. So my apologies. The screenshots are uh, a version back. I think. So we're going to go to the keyboard. Now, we need to set um, the keyboard layout, desktop or laptop. Now, basically, what this does is when you use the screen reader, uh, JAWS and NVDA in particular, you have a special key that you need to use that tells the screen reader that the keyboard entries that I'm going to be listening for are unique to my coding and my uh, commands. So rather than typing in um, T, let's say, to start to spell someone's name, um, maybe you want the, uh, the, the screen reader to understand T for something else. So there is a modifier key, <clears throat> and it's basically the insert key. Now, some of the laptops don't come with insert keys, and so you can use this caps lock as the NVDA modifier. <clears throat> if you have the keyboard layout set to desktop, it pretty much is assuming that it's going to be the insert key, but you can set it to laptop, and then you have the, basically, it'll understand you can use caps lock and some other things that might be a little different. So we'll just set that to desktop. But we do want to make sure that we have this checkbox checked for speak command keys. And that's kind of important because some of the commands are, let's say we're tabbing through the screen and we hear things and we want to share this speech view that you can view where you can see on the screen here. We want to share this text with our development team. And you can prove, see, I hit the tab key three times, hit the backspace, and such and such happens. So it'll announce those commands and it'll capture it and it just helps with your communication with uh, your sharing information about your testing session. So we want to have speak command keys set. Get an okay on that. And oh somebody's drawing on my screen. Um, okay, we got all that. Insert caps lock. Uh, speech viewer. So I have speech viewer turned on. Let me show you what that's at. In tools, there's a speech viewer checkbox. So you check that on or off, and it shows or hides. So I'm going to make sure I go to tools, speech viewer, turn it on. And now um, in some of the recent versions, they've added this checkbox, show speech viewer on startup. So you don't have to check this on and off all the time. So I keep that checked on. I typically shrink this down a little bit. So it's out of the way uh, because basically you just want to listen to maybe and capture the last few things that are being said. But you can make this really big. So if you want to capture a long 
uh, interaction session. You can just make it really long and listen to all the text and then do a screenshot and capture that. But just to make it convenient, I shrink it down and keep it out of the way. It's off to the side. So the nice thing also is that um, in some cases, you don't have the ability to have your uh, speaker turned on, or maybe you don't have headphones. Uh, sometimes you have VM systems that um, don't support a, a sound card. And so I, I've had had testers that just watch the speech viewer and don't even hear what's being said. Um, with JAWS, you don't get this ability to have a dynamic speech. With JAWS, there's basically a speech history, so that's one little difference. But um, we'll keep that turned on. Let's say we got speech viewer, and I talked about that this checkbox is there. Hearing mode changes. So we're going to go to settings, preferences, and browse mode. Okay. Uh, settings, browse mode. Now, the browse mode is basically um, the screen reader's ability to be listening for keyboard commands for its own internal functions. And that's most cases, it's using the insert key and the down arrow to read the page. But you can also use um, the insert for like the F7 and see some other elements on the screen. And you want to make sure that you're in browse mode for some of these commands. Uh, if you hit the T for table, you want to make sure that it's in browse mode so it accepts the T key for going to the next table. And you can jump to other elements and, and go through the screen by hitting certain other keys. But if you're not in browse mode, it'll think the T is because you want to spell Tom or table or something like that. So um, right out of the box, this checkbox is checked, audio indication of focus in browse mode. And what that is, is either a bell or a click. But I like unchecking it because it'll actually say browse mode. Um, and focus mode. It'll it'll say it on the screen. And again, you can confirm with yourself that you're in the right mode. You don't have to try to remember what the bell means or what the click means. And you can confirm to any of your teammates with a screenshot of the speech viewer. Uh, see, I'm in the right mode and it's not doing the right thing. So make sure that that is unchecked. And we'll say, okay. And what else we got here? Mode changes. Okay, we did that. My screen is jumping around. And now the modes are changed by using the insert and the space bar. So let me jump to, let's see what else we got to do here. Uh, insert and space bar. Speak to command keys. Okay. So I think that's about it. Insert and space bar. I have a list of some of the commands, and you'll see <laughs> it's pretty easy. I'm going to move this off the screen. And that'll be on the side in case we need to see that. So I'm going to jump right into a page. So here I am on a page, Kaiser Permanente. I'm going to turn on my um, little external speaker so it's nice and loud. And we're just going to start moving through the page. So all we need to do is we want to listen to the elements and make sure that they're announcing correctly. Um, Buttons have labels that are displayed. They should say what we see. Uh, input fields should have a label. You notice that actually I didn't refresh the page. These two displayed fields do not have labels. So what you're going to find is you can actually do a lot of different types of testing while you're doing the screen reader testing. You can use keyboard interaction testing. You can make sure that uh, there's focus indication. So it's a really nice um, opportunity to capture and test three or four different things at the same time. So uh, I want to go to the very start of the page. I have in my document that you can oftentimes use a control and a home key. This is not unique to the screen reader. It's um, 
it works for most applications. Sometimes it doesn't work you for websites. And I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, we'll try control home and see if it gets to the top of the page. It says blank. Let's see. Tab. No. If, if in doubt, let's uh, put focus up here in the URL. And now I'm hitting the control key. That's a nice one to know because it'll silence uh, the screen reader until you start moving again. So I'm just going to start tabbing through this page. And what I'm looking for, first off, is is there a skip to main content or skip navigation link? So while it's not necessarily, if you will, screen reader testing, it should be there and it should be announced. So let's just hit the tab key. So uh, Kaiser Permanentity is the first link. And we don't see any skip navigation link here, but notice what happens when I tab onto the Espanol link. So this label says Espanol, but is announced as English. So here we have our first defect. Um, we should hear what we see. Now we'll tab again. Choose your region. You told the South Arrow to open the menu list California Northern Collapse. Focus mode. All right, so this is telling us a few things. Let me make this a little bigger. We'll start over just so you can. List with choose your region. You told the Okay, so we have a couple issues here. We have Espanol that announces English. We see that there is no actual um, label for, this, for these select lists. Uh, this one here being some type of a uh, location state should have a label, choose your region. Now, since it announces choose your region, we have a little bit of a challenge because if someone is using speech input, they don't know what to say. We might not be able to select this by saying North California or N California or even California <clears throat> because the label for this element isn't displayed. So as you're going through with the screen reader, you're going to be hearing things and the biggest challenge about using a screen reader is to understand what you should be hearing that is going to be describing the content of your page to someone who is blind. It's almost like, you know, trying to tell someone a story. Um, you want to tell them about the surroundings. You want to tell them about the sounds around. If someone can't see, what should they be hearing? And that's oftentimes the hardest thing to learn, and it just takes a little bit of experience. But as we go through this, we'll, we'll see some obvious things. So these are some obvious issues. I'm just going to keep tabbing around. You see how it says browse mode? It tells me tab. So you see how it's, it's jumping modes automatically, and it's also... Uh, speaking the keys that I enter. So it's always good to me to, to capture that information. Tab, register link. User ID edit requires it by event with user ID blank. Focus mode. So you see that it's, um, it will hear some other elements. We'll hear um, oftentimes the role, uh, input fields or buttons or links. Um, here we hear user ID edit required invalid, so it's given us some validation too. Uh, these should have permanent labels, but they don't. Uh, password edit requested required in my event with password blank. So you see how it's announcing password twice? Custom care, custom, custom care and coverage just for you type. User ID edit, custom care and coverage, password edit. Sometimes the password gets announced twice because the input field type and the data type is password. And then it also has a label. So uh, sometimes you might hear things that don't make sense, but you have to learn some of the coding practices and, and what should and shouldn't be announced and what does get announced. Let's just uh, keep going here. Uh, so don't use it, I see. Uh, 
search off password, link search off password, tab terms and conditions, link terms and conditions. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for a minute. NVDIC, NVDIC, you have a tie block tab, show C, shit, 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 tab. Now, the other thing is you have to get used to using the keyboard. Um, it's okay to drag your mouse around and see if if things have drop down menus or if they have pop up things with your mouse, but you need to test with a keyboard because a blind user is not going to be using a mouse. So when we tab into this terms and conditions, terms and conditions, link terms and conditions. What we want to think about is that. How important is this link and the surrounding text? Now, it may be technically okay that it says terms and conditions, which is the label, but the fact that the interaction is with a keyboard, they may not actually hear the text before it. By signing in, you agree to our terms and conditions. And we need to be careful about some of these legal things that the links to them maybe should be also announcing the other text. So you want to consider as you're testing, is the right information being announced? Now, a user with a screen reader can actually, at this point, just use the arrow keys and move backwards in the code and hear other things. So if I'm right here, if I just hit the arrow key. Left arrow out of link. Left arrow R. Left arrow U. Left arrow O. Left arrow T. So you can hear the letters if you hit the up arrow. Up arrow, link for document ID, or link for doc password. Uh, the up arrow will go up inside the code one line at a time or down one line at a time. So I'm up in the forgot your username, the user ID, it reads the whole thing. Now if I go down once. Up arrow, my side is you have three four link terms and conditions and link three this statement. You see that it announces the whole thing. So a blind person often um, will need to learn some of the other context of an element, and they just use the up arrow or the down arrow. And the way the screen readers work is they're actually reading uh, a copy of the document object model um, that it has in memory. So this browse mode means that it's actually browsing inside of that memory version that it has. So when there's updates to the screen, we want to make sure that there's updates to the document object model. And the screen reader uh, with certain coding commands will read updates to the DOM. And that's just a little thing you need to learn about as you get more experience. But error alerts, uh, some of the new requirements for WCAG 2.0 one is that their status messages announced. So if you do a search, um, we should hear an update, you know, found three results. Those types of things should be announced by the screen reader without the user doing any other input. But here, uh, again, it's just you need to be careful about some of these legal things because the user may skip the fact that they're agreeing to something by signing in. Uh, we'll keep going here. There's a couple interesting things to, that I found. Okay. So here's a, here's a situation. When we have multiple buttons or links that say the same thing, the screen reader needs to announce um, what's unique about it. If a, if a screen reader user only hears learn more and learn more, they may be confused and not quite sure what they're learning more about, or should they arrow up or arrow down to listen to the surrounding text? So we should be announcing other types of information with these buttons as to what they're learning more about. So there is a number of different ways to code it, and I'm not going to get into all the coding practices now, but uh, sometimes as you start testing, and this is typical of software testing, in the beginning stages, 
if you learn to find out what's wrong and you write up a defect on it, you don't really need to tell the developers how to fix it. Oftentimes, you just tell them it's not working right. Now, the challenge with accessibility is that oftentimes the developers may, might not know how to fix it. So as you get more experience, you can begin to learn multiple ways to fix it. Well, do we use an ARIA label? Or do we use something called an ARIA labeled by? How about an ARIA described by? How about some visually hidden text? that will announce as well. How about just a title? So there's multiple ways to, to solve this problem, but we have, in this case, two learn mores that need to announce more information. So those would be defects. So here's another issue. These next three links are very bad. The display text is know the facts about the flu, but it announces read more of the article. A screen reader user um, may not have a problem with that, although it does say know the facts, but a speech input user will not know what to announce to its uh, device or speak into its microphone in order to select this link. And the um, again, we go back to some of the new things for WCAG 2.1. Identify the input purpose is a new item, a new number, 1.3.5. The link needs to have in its code um, the display text as the link information. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be the hard-coded text. You could do some other kind of labeling technique. And typically, if you're going to use some other labeling technique, you should always repeat what's displayed first. So the link could have another label that says, know the facts about the flu, read more of the article, but it should always start with a displayed text. This one. So it's reading the fact that it's a main landmark. That's some other type of element that I won't get into, but typically um, you may hear other things that are in the code. Um, it's not wrong, it's not bad, but we're trying to focus on the link label at this point. Another one, <coughs> again, same problem. Uh, let's go down here. Here we have a read more. We have a learn more external link, that's okay. You can see visually that there's an outside pointing arrow, which is a visual indication that it's going to some other, uh, leaving the site, leaving uh, the page, maybe going into a new tab or a new window. A new tab would be up, up in the screen here. So that's okay. Um, but the read more should be, what is reading more about? Because we have another read more here. And now if we use the insert and the F7 key, so there's another command you need to learn. So far, I've only done the tab key, uh, which isn't really a screen reader key. And then um, insert and the F7. This shows us some of the elements. So it's looking inside the memory and it's finding all this information from the page. Let me, let me turn off my uh, microphone or speaker for a minute. Um, here's all the links. So if a, a blind user wants to find all the links on the page, they can get the link list and they can navigate this with a keyboard. Uh, you can tab and get to certain places. There's various keys to do this. But basically, we can see that there's multiple links with the same name, learn more. So here they don't know which, maybe which learn more to read, which learn, read more do we select? Read more about the article, read more of the article. There's no indication as to what those really mean. Now they can go to them by uh, selecting them. You can move your, with the arrows or you can use your mouse. But you see down here, we can activate the link or we can move to it. So if you want, you can move to it and figure out which one it is. But basically, at this point, they're going to be lost unless they select the link, and then maybe they find out that they selected the wrong one. 
So here's the issue that we have multiple links that have the same label, and this is another WCAG um, link purpose uh, violation. We need to make sure we're announcing what the information is that they're going to be going to when you have, and what the distinguishing factor is as well when you have multiple links of the same thing. We can also check all the headings. <coughs> Excuse me. We can go to form fields. Uh, we can find all the buttons. So we have some duplicate learn more buttons. We can also look at the landmarks. And so I don't have this written down in the documentation, I don't think, but landmarks and regions are various um, construction components of your page. And they need to also have labels if you have multiple um, landmarks of the same type. So we have three different navigation regions or landmarks and two different main landmarks, they should have labels that announce their uniqueness. So this would be another thing to be testing for with a screen reader. You can look into the code, but it'll take you forever and a day to figure out all of this structure. Uh, why not just use your screen reader and JAWS and NVDA both have this. You can quickly see a list of all of your landmarks. You can make a screenshot and say, listen, we have you know, three different landmarks that are navigation, we have to have different labeling. Typically, it would be like the top menu, the side menu, the bottom menu. In this case, the content info is the footer, and there's some navigation down here in the bottom. But that would be uh, insert F7, and when you're done with this display, you need to close it. If you don't close it, and just click somewhere on the screen, what happens is, NVDA uh, doesn't allow you to move this speech viewer and you can't exit NVDA. So you have to make sure you have it turned off and then you can click on this and move it around. Now I have some other pages. We got a little bit of time left. Um, I got some. Here it is, sites to test. Oh, business employee health, okay. Let's go to this one. Turn my uh, speech thing back on. Four. I'm just gonna start tabbing around. Tab, tab, other languages, tab, tab, table, search row one, column one, table, search row one, column one, search edit, search blank, focus mode. Okay, table, row and column. Now, why is it saying that there's a table? Um, in my documentation, let me go get that. Oh, be quiet, let me shut this off for a minute. Um, I have a list of, at the very bottom, Table bookmarklet. This this site here, Paul J. Adam, he's got a list uh, of a of a lot of nice bookmarklets that you can just put on your browser. You drag them from the uh, site to your browser, and then you can click on them, and it'll automatically do certain things. The table will show you the table coding. Uh, another good one to have is forced focus. But so go to here and check out his bookmarklets. But let's see what we got here. So if I hit the um, tables, okay, we can see that we have a table that is used for what's called layout purposes. So you have a table that should not be uh, announced by the screen reader. Unless a table is used for data, as in like a spreadsheet with columns and rows, um, we don't need to hear column information, row information. So this is a violation of the uh, WCAG 1.3.1, and which is a little bit sometimes confusing to understand, but talking about tables and coding things properly, we are hearing some structure that we don't really see. So we need to write this up as an issue. Basically, um, 
tables that are used for presentations need to have a row equals presentation attribute added. And then we won't hear this row and column stuff. So I'm going to refresh the page. But um, as it come on, okay. I want to show you one more thing. This uh, force focus. If your screen and your website isn't showing focus indication, the force focus is a nice tool because it puts a nice bright um, orange outline around things. Now this does have focus indication, but I just want to show you that it's a nice way to um, confirm where you're at with the screen reader if you don't see the uh, keyboard focus indication. So that's just the other bookmarklet that I, I use a lot. But <clears throat> I wanted to show you a couple other things on this page. And let's see, where is it at? Down here in the bottom. So let's go tab, tab, tab. Turn my speaker back on. Okay, LinkedIn visited link. When I select this with the enter key, you see that it opens the browser up in a new a new in a new tab. Um, in the WCAG 3.2.2 on input, basically if you're going to a new tab or a new window, you need to tell the user that before they go there. So this is not labeled correctly because it's not telling us that it's going to a new tab. And the reason for telling a user that is, um, when a page reloads in the same tab, in this case we have that left tab, right? If they want to go backwards to where they were before, they can hit the back button of the browser, if you can use a mouse, or you can use the Alt and the left arrow key. Now when you go to a new tab, you can't get back to where you were in the previous window or tab without first navigating to that tab. So a blind user, may get lost because they don't know they're in a new tab from where they were before and they may not know how to get back to where they were before they selected this link. So we always should make them aware of going to new tabs or new windows. <clears throat> Historically it's been called opening a new window but if you see uh, usually you can right mouse button <clears throat> and they have an option of a new tab or a new window. <clears throat> so if the terms are a little different these days, either one works. Um, and you should be aware of selecting an element by just putting your mouse over here, hitting the right mouse button, you can inspect it. And a lot of times you can edit the code if it's static. Uh, try out some suggested code fix, and then once you close this up, you go back to the page, it'll have updated the page, and um, you can hear what you've added. So it's a good way to like learn how to make suggestions to fix things. Maybe you want to add a title, uh, you want to add some ARIA labeling. So you need to get used to either hitting the F12 key to display the um, developer tools or right mouse button on an element and inspect it. Uh, I had another... Okay. So we're going to go to this page and just listen for a couple things. So here it's talking about that navigation landmark. You see how it's got navigation landmark, navigation landmark. There's one inside of another, so that's probably not a good thing, but that's where you would hear it. And Sometimes you can use that to your advantage because you can put a label to it. So you can say main menu. Um, some people 
may even make these separate navigation areas so that it'll announce find care as a grouping for all of these buttons or all these links. It could have a, a region for this one so that it announces our organization as a grouping for all of this. Uh, so there's some ways you can use these landmarks for other coding practices, but I want to get to these buttons. Okay, so I got a business button, so I select it. And now new content shows up on the screen. <clears throat> so there is no indication that new content is going to be displayed, and that's okay because the user typically just has to use the keyboard to navigate to continue through the page anyway. So if we continue navigating with the tab key, so you see how the tab puts us to the next location. It announces one and announces focus mode. So it's automatically changed the modes to accept the keyboard entry for using the screen, not using the screen reader. So our up and down arrows, the left and right arrows, will not be reading through the code. They will be moving to the radio button. Right arrow, two to 50 radio. Right arrow, four to 50 radio. Left arrow, left arrow, one radio button. So if we switch modes, insert space bar. You see if we use the right arrow, it's starting to read the letters. Right arrow, out of radio button. Right arrow, double two. Right arrow, O. So the mode change will change what the keyboard uh, will be interpreted as. We want to be in the browse mode, so insert space bar. I'm sorry, we want to be in focus mode, so we use the space bar. Now arrow keys navigate. We get the same thing with individual family. The problem here is, though, that the radio buttons need to announce their grouping. When you're going through form fields, a user needs to know what this yes is applying to. What are they answering yes to? What are they answering no to? They can change modes and listen to it, look around, you know, listen to the code, but we should be telling them, are you or your spouse turning 65 or older? Yes. Checkbox one of two. No. So let's go with yes. Whoops, enter. Enter. Oops, baseball. Yes. Okay, we got another one. Uh, yes, radio button, not check, one or two. Again, it's not telling us this information. Uh, five care routing list, a uh, five link shop class, which class. Okay, so this now, they've coded it so that when we get into this list, it's telling us that it's a fine care grouping. We'll go and we'll hear the uh, first one in our organization. We'll do the same thing. So they've done a nice job of showing us information and announcing information that we can see visually. There's other ways to do this, but uh, this is a really nice way. Now we only got nine more minutes, so I want to jump real quickly into some tables. I couldn't find any tables on a website, so I just went to this uh, training thing. And this is a web page, so if we're just tabbing around. Okay, if I want to go to a table, all I have to do is make sure I'm in browse mode and hit the letter T. Now we can just try the letter T and see if it works. So, so we're in browse mode. Now we can always double check, insert space bar. Since we went into browse mode or focus, we were in browse. We'll go back to browse. Now, if I if I'm in focus mode, if I hit the, hit the letter T. It's not doing anything. So we want to make sure we're in the browse mode. So here's another table. So now let's navigate through this table to see if it's announcing things correctly. 
And the way you do that is the uh, control and the alt buttons are held down at the same time and then just use the arrow keys. So I'm going to hold down control alt and then down arrow. Alt plus control plus out arrow. Rotor aim a shabbat. Alt plus control plus out arrow. Rotary shabbat. Rotary shabbat. Rotary shabbat. So I'm gonna go gonna go right. You see how it announces the column and then it announces the data in that cell. So a table, if it's coded correctly, should announce this relationship. Uh, it should announce the label of the column as you move into the column. It'll announce the row data if you move down a row. Um, we can always hit our HTML tables, Google Pro. Table thing. HTML tables, HTML, alert, HTML tables, Google Pro. And you can see that it's got THs and TDs. The interesting thing is, though, that um, according to WCAG guidelines and, and recommendations, uh, tables need to have captions or some other labeling. So here we don't have a caption and or some other kind of labeling. And the reason is we, we need to tell the user what this data is about. Now they can use the up arrow if they listen through the code and find out that it's about people and their salaries. Um, of course, you can get that information from some of the columns, but in real life, you may not get that information from the data in the columns. You need to know that it's account data. Um, Alan, you know, um, in the next two minutes, can we take the questions in the next two minutes, probably? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to finish HTML up. Table. So, um, HTML table. that's good. about all I can show you in the short time we have. If you have any questions, we can open up now and feel free to email me, and I'll be glad to get you going and help you with anything you need help with. So let me turn off the screen reader. I'll just silence the speaker and uh, open it up for questions. Does anybody have any questions? So, yeah, the question, one question says that is there any docu this document available for download? Uh, we can share it uh, via email to the participant. Any other documentation about, about what now? Uh, the question is that the document that you are showing, is that available yes. for download? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And we've shared it, I think, with some. But yes, it's available. I can also, we can also give you the one for JAWS, uh, which has a couple different commands for JAWS as well. I didn't, what I didn't do is I didn't read through the page by the way, so um, what I want to show you is I'm going to try to get to a certain spot. Okay. So the sign all, if I want to listen to the rest of the page or just double check that this paragraph is announcing correctly, I just make sure I'm in browse mode, insert space bar, browse mode. And then all I have to do is do the insert and the down arrow. So typically, you don't need to listen to the whole page, but you might want to be checking a paragraph. Uh, we might want to check and make sure that when um, it's reading through a page, if there is drop-down menus, that the drop-down menu content is not being announced unless it's being displayed. Uh, maybe we want to make sure that it's going to announce some of this data. Um, we got to see more, uh, which I presume it's all going to be announced. But so that's basically the other command you need to do: insert and down arrow, let it read through a section Alan, paragraph you, for the whole page. Can you show yep. uh, uh, how to change the voices in NVDA? So there's one question that asks: Can we change this robotic? Change the voices. Yes. 
Oh, you're tired of listening to this uh, Australian guy, huh? I don't remember where that's at, but let's see if yeah. we got. Um, in the settings, uh, under preferences in the settings, where you have changed the rate, I think in the same. Yeah. There's, there's, you can load different. Um, come on. NVDA settings, preferences. You can pick various uh, synthesizers. Yeah, I think that you have to change from settings again from general settings. Yeah, you can um, you can also download things. There's here this um, voice. Yeah, okay. There's all these different there's different languages, but there's also like uh, male and female pe voices and some other different things. You may have to go online and download a synthesized voice. What do we get here? Now, see, I haven't loaded anything, but yeah, you know, I used to have like a. You can get women from different languages, from different countries, with different accents, uh, different guys. Sometimes they sound a little easier. I've gotten used to just the default voice, but um, you can pick other voices if you want to hear things a little differently. So one other question is that um, someone is asking if if there is a chart that shows key commands comparison between NVDA and JAWS. Not that I know of. Exactly. Yeah, there's just a few keyboard commands <clears throat> from a learning standpoint. Basically, switching modes is insert Z in uh, JAWS and insert spacebar in NVDA. Um, JAWS allows you to find a separate list for three or four different things where NVDA puts all in one select list. Um, but there are some differences. I think out of the box, JAWS will not announce a duplicate title if the title is exactly as the label of a button or a link. Um, NVDA seems to be a lot better kind of going strictly by the code, JAWS tries to fix things, uh, which sometimes because of, becomes a problem because if you have um, this, real quickly here, if these are linked images, if the links aren't and the image isn't done right, it's possible that this link will announce this label. It'll announce one to the left. If you're tabbing forwards, it may announce the wrong one. If you're tabbing backwards, you could announce the label from the previous one because um, link images need to have a label. If they don't, it tries to find the closest one in the code to try to fix things, and it'll fix it wrongly for you. So JAWS does a little bit of fixing that sometimes messes things up. Well, we're right at our deadline here. Um, let me know if you have any questions or need any other assistance. Again, it's pretty simple. Just tab around and then that insert down arrow and pretty much got it from there. Cool. Um, thank you, Alan. And if you can spell out your You're email welcome. address for the people. Yeah. Right there. A L A N D S. 289 at gmail.com. Awesome. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll share this recording to the people who joined soon. Uh, and also, once again, mm -hmm. I will share the documents, the uh, NVDA, and if possible, if Alan can share Joe's document as well, I'll share them with the guys. Mm -hmm. um, with that, uh, any other questions or thoughts, we can. Uh, wrap up the session for today okay well thank you everyone i appreciate it and uh good luck learning screen reader and testing screen readers and making our websites uh, more accessible thank you thanks a lot ellen for your time and thank you everyone thank you. you're welcome bye thank bye. you everyone thank you thank bye. you Mikesh. bye now bye have a good day Thank you for watching and being with us. 
please like and share the video. Don't forget to click on the bell icon and also for more updates subscribe the channel.